Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I am Luke Ness Monster. Today, we do have a ton of Star Wars The Black Series and TBC reveals to go over from today's Fan First Wednesday live stream. So, let's go ahead and just jump right into the reveals. Real quick though, if you're not yet subscribed to the channel, make sure to go down, hit that like button, and subscribe because we are actually giving away this Mando build a pack at 7,000 subscribers. You guys do actually have to be subscribed to the channel to enter, so make sure you are subbed. And uh, basically how that'll work is once we hit 7k, I'll make a giveaway video. All you have to do is make sure you're subbed and then comment on that giveaway video to enter. And uh, then I will give it to a random subscriber. So make sure you're subbed and on to the news. So, first up, we're going to cover Black Series, then TBC, and then Pipelines. So, starting off with the Black Series, we did get one Gaming Greats reveal today. And honestly, overall, I'm pretty happy with it. We did get uh, Sev from Republic Commando. Now, this is a figure, like I said, I've been asking for for quite a while. I'm a huge Republic Commando fan. And honestly, I'm just really be I'm, I'm just really happy to be finally getting the rest of Delta Squad. So, yeah, I know a lot of people are still going to be complaining that it is on that older... Uh, hunter body rather than a new commando body but you know it is what it is and at this point I've gotten over it but I will bring up something later in this video that might kind of flip-flop my mind on that but uh, we'll get in that to, uh, into that in a second. Overall, I gotta say, I think this figure looks best paint app wise. Uh, the gray and then like the maroonish red color just looks absolutely incredible on, on this figure. He definitely looks the most like worn and battle damaged, and I absolutely love it. I really like how this figure came out, and I, I do think he's the best looking out of all the commandos. On the plus side, they also did make a brand new mold for the commando sniper. This is something that we are kind of 50 50 on whether they're going to do it or not and i'm really glad they decided to do it because the sniper is just pretty iconic to sev's character it's like making a crosshair without giving him a sniper it just wouldn't work and so i'm really glad they decided to make a uh, a new mold for the commando sniper for sev and then they also didn't include the uh shoulder attachment for sev's shoulder this is one that i really am upset about honestly i think it's it's not it's it's a small detail that not a lot of people might have noticed at first glance, but it's a part of the character. And if they're making new molds for like Fixer, they made a new mold for his helmet, they made a new mold for his backpack. I would have expected a new mold for Sev and his shoulder. It, you know, it's just a shoulder, so it's not like you have to make a whole new body mold. It's literally just a shoulder pad, and that's something I wish they would have done. This Commando Sev does go for pre-order tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern time. And it will be a GameStop exclusive. One thing that really caught me off guard is that it says it's uh, uh, expected to be on store shelves winter of 2022, which is really surprising because the two Gaming Greats figures that went up for pre-order last month, uh, they are expected to hit store spring of 2023. So why is this figure getting revealed later but shipping sooner? Doesn't make any sense to me, but you know, just my two cents. Next up, we did get a deluxe figure. This is a deluxe figure that has been rumored forever now. Honestly, it's probably been rumored for a little over a year now, but it is a deluxe Saul Guerrera from his live action appearance in Rogue One. This is a pretty cool looking figure, I do have to say. He uh, looks absolutely incredible. Paint apps are great. Figure looks great. Accessories are pretty cool. Overall, I'm really happy with how this figure turned out. I think, uh, you know, overall, this is what we would have wanted when getting a Saul Guerrero figure. So I am glad we are getting him in the line. A uh, few problems is... Uh, always comes down to the price he is a deluxe figure which means he's going to be the new deluxe price of $34.99 that is a very very expensive deluxe figure nowadays and I'm gonna go back and argue that he is a bigger character he does have a very bulky chest kind of thing going on but I don't think he's worth an extra $10 more compared to a normal Black Series figure. You're not getting any extra accessories than you normally get, and so because of that, I, I just can't justify that deluxe price. I think I would, much would have rather had him in the standard Black Series box. I don't understand why they have to put him in that deluxe box and charge extra. I understand he's a little bit bulkier, but... I, I might even accept them at that $30 deluxe price, but the fact that they just had that price increase to make every deluxe figure 35 is just not, it's not, uh, not the best. And then for Black Series, we did get three of the comic book figures revealed. One of these actually blew me out of the water, not at all what I expected, and that is uh, Sergeant Creel or Krell, something like that, as I believe how you pronounce it, but it is a Stormtrooper with lightsaber. And really... Whenever I heard this figure was rumored, I was just expecting them to throw a pauldron on a normal stormtrooper, give him a, light, a lightsaber, and call it. 
and uh, they completely exceeded my expectations. He got a brand new torso mold for this figure that does include a jetpack. He does have a brand new thigh piece that does have a like little strap and pouch on it. He has a new belt piece which has a holster and another like strap and pouch on it. And then he does have a few extra arm molds as well. So a ton of new molds on this figure which is really surprising because it is a comic figure. And normally with the uh, publishing line they don't really include new molds that much. So th they went above and beyond in this figure. And I'm really happy they decided to do it because this figure came out really good. But for me, that also brings up the point, if they're able to make new molds like this, I made an entire new torso mold for this figure, why didn't they make a new torso mold for a commando figure, like a Sev, Boss, or Fixer? Just something I wanted to bring up, and I'll probably make an entire video talking about it later. But, you know, if they're able to make new molds for stuff like this, why didn't they make it for... The other commandos. Next up is a Leia. I'm not exactly sure what comic this is from so I do apologize but this figure does look pretty good. I know some people were more excited about it than me. Uh, only thing is from all the photos I've seen of this character it looks like she's wearing a tighter suit and so I think the Padme body would have worked a little bit better than uh, I believe this is like a, mis a mishmash of different like Gen Urso bodies and uh, it just looks really baggy in my opinion. I, I mean it's not a huge deal. I don't think I'm going to pick up the figure anyway but I just figured that the the Padme body would have worked a little bit better but then you know everybody would be blaming them for reuse reuse and people would be mad about that which I do understand as well but uh, I, I just think that the Padme ba body would have fit the, the pictures so much better. But this figure does have a brand new head sculpt which is pretty cool. I'm glad we're getting new new molds on some of these figures and I think the any Leia head sculpt nowadays looks pretty good so it is nice to get a new one. Last up is the uh, white Darth Vader or um, I, don't, I don't know what else to call it maybe like the saved Darth Vader uh, I don't know the official name but it is a white Darth Vader and it is really cool looking I do have to say um, it's just an exact reuse of Empire Strikes Back Darth Vader but white and honestly I do like it is it a figure I'm gonna pick up probably not and that's only because I just don't have room in my collection for it I have you know different displays for like Clone Wars Mandalorian Imperial but I don't really have a spot for a white Darth Vader and I just don't see how it would fit into my collection so I probably am gonna pass on this figure as well super cool though and I I think it did come out really well but, um, you know, it's just not something that is something that I would collect. But I know there's a lot of people that would collect it, so I say if you are into that, go for it. All of these publishing figures do go for pre-order tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern, and they are fan channel exclusive, so check all your fan channel sites if you do want to pre-order them. TBC did get a few reveals as well. I am just going to kind of speed through these pretty quickly as I am not a TBC collector. First up was actually revealed by fan channel sites yesterday and not during the actual live stream, but that was Figure and Dan. This is a figure that is pretty exciting. I know that you guys just did get the Navarra Cantina, so you could always throw him in with, with that. But he also does come with three different... Uh, musical instruments so that means if you buy three of them you can have them all play different instruments and have the entire cantina band and I think that is pretty cool. During the stream though the uh, developers did say that they would uh, be re-releasing this figure later this year or then maybe down a few years uncarded so I'm assuming that's uh, kind of hinting towards a cantina playset. We'll see but I think that uh, is kind of what they were hinting towards. Next up is two gaming greats figures uh, one is called Shea Vizsla. This is a figure or character that I've never even heard of before in my life. But we do have images of her and she looks absolutely incredible. I do have to say, I they blew me out of the water with this reveal. I thought I was watching some kind of like Halo, like, like Spartan armor or it looks like almost like... Uh, I don't know what to call it, but it didn't it didn't look like Star Wars to me, but it blew me out of the water because this looks like pretty brand new figure and it looks pretty incredible in my opinion. So one of the best TVC figures I've ever seen. So yeah, it does look really, really good and completely surprised me. We also got a new style for Lando in the Battlefront 2 packaging for the Gaming Greats line for TVC. This is one that kind of just mind boggles mind boggles me I guess you could say I love Lando and I actually really like this outfit for him I think this outfit looks amazing and it looks great in figure form but I, d I just don't understand why Hasbro hasn't caught on to the fact that 
Landos don't sell. I'm going to be finding this figure in GameStops and all other fan channel places. They're not going to sell out because Landos just don't sell. Any store I walk into, they'll have at least two or three Landos. All different types of Landos, whether they're uh, Black Series, TVC, 40th Anniversary, Empire Strikes Back. There's there's Landos everywhere, and I, I just feel like by now Hasbro would realize that Landos don't sell. Other than that, I think the figure looks absolutely incredible, though. There was also three Clone Wars figures for TVC revealed. First up is a Death Watch Trooper. This guy looks insane. It's a brand new paint app. I'm assuming it just does use the uh, normal TVC like Death Trooper or Death Watch Trooper mold, but it is a repaint. But it looks absolutely incredible. Uh, not a whole lot to say about it. I think it looks great, and I think it's gonna go gonna go good with some of the Season Seven Mandalorian figures or Season Seven Clone Wars figures you guys got uh, earlier in 2021 with Ahsoka. Speaking of that, you guys got the Maldalorian, which would go great with Season 7 Maul, which you guys also got in 2021. But this figure looks exactly like the Black Series version, but I think this one is a lot better because it is on just a better body mold. For the Black Series, we did get it on the old Django body, and that body absolutely sucks. So, uh, I think TBC definitely lucked out with this figure. It looks incredible, and uh, like I said, not a whole lot more to say about it. It just looks really, really good. Next up is a re-release of Arc Trooper Jesse. This was originally released in the Arc Trooper 3-pack back a little while ago and uh, it's just a single release of it it will be carded on its own and I'm actually disappointed with this figure I do own that original Jesse figure because I did get that Arc Trooper 3 pack but it is right here so um, I will just show you guys this I guess instead of throwing up the photos but as you can tell it does not have the correct Jesse helmet it has the fin and it has the rangefinder Considering that this is the first time they ever used that Arc Trooper mold and it was an exclusive set and everything was kind of like a one-off thing, it wasn't a main release. I wasn't too worried about the helmet being messed up, but on the main release, they used the exact same helmet. They did not switch to the correct Jesse helmet, and that's what bothers me. I think they heard a lot of people complain about it. They knew it was wrong, and they didn't switch to a normal helmet. And the thing that gets me, it's not like they have to make a new mold or anything for it. It's the, His helmet is just a normal Phase 2 helmet. It's not like it's a brand new mold or anything. They just literally had to grab a Phase 2 helmet and put on it. And I was kind of expecting them to fix that for the main release, and they didn't. And that's, that's one thing I'm a little upset about this figure. But again, I don't really collect TVC, so I'm not that upset. But moving on to pipeline reveals, we do have two for the Black Series and four for the TVC. For Black Series, first up is Grogu and his Pram. I don't, I don't get this one. We have two other releases of Grogu and his Pram. Pram. I know both of those were in Mando Builder packs, so they were exclusives, and I do understand that aspect of it, but. This is going to be a mainline wave figure. I don't understand why Grogu needs a mainline wave figure. His normal figure peg warms really bad. Uh, that one released back in 2020 and I still find him on, sh on store shelves. So I don't understand why he's getting a mainline release. I do understand the Pram part. I do understand you want to get a mainline release of the Pram. But make it a fan channel exclusive. Why does it have to be a mainline wave figure? If it's a mainline wave figure, it's going to be $24.99 and... Uh, I, I don't know. I just don't get it. I honestly think that that figure is going to be overpriced and it's going to peg warm a lot harder than Grief Karga. It's going to peg warm harder than Lando's. But that's just my opinion. And at this point, anybody who really wanted a Grogu or wanted a Pram, they've had every opportunity to get one. And so just making a mainline release of it is just kind of crazy in my opinion. Just think of all the other figures that could have got a mainline wave spot over this Grogu. And, and they gave it to Grogu instead. That's just... what? And then next up is a Migs Mayfeld. This is one that I could honestly care less about. I love Migs Mayfeld. I think he's a great character. I love him in the show, but I don't really need a figure of him. But I do think the season one outfit of him is awesome. And I think I like that outfit better than the season two outfit, which they already did release in the Black Series. So I think I'd pick this one up over that one, but it's still another figure that I'm just not super worried about. Before we jump into the TVC pipelines, I did forget to announce that there's also a Black Series helmet. Now this one is another one that I'm honestly disappointed about and it is a repaint of the X-Wing helmet and it is Trapper Wolf. I love Dave Filoni, don't get me wrong, but this is just a helmet I could care less about. I, I Like I said, I love Dave Filoni and I love the Mandalorian. But if I'm going to go out and buy a $120 X-Wing helmet, it's going to be a Luke Skywalker helmet or a, just a generic X-Wing helmet. I don't think I need a all-green Trapper Wolf helmet. Like I said, it's a cool one. I'm glad, I'm glad they're bringing stuff like that into the Black Series, but 
It's just not anything I really care about. Except for TVC pipelines, we did get some pretty solid TVC pipelines. First up is the uh, Village Raider. I don't know how to pronounce that word, so I'm just going to call it the Village Raider. But the, these are like the aliens that were kind of attacking Mando and Grogu on that farming village back in Season 1. Pretty solid figure, and it's nice to get some more background aliens. After that is the artillery, artillery Stormtrooper. You know, this is great. I love to get Stormtroopers. More army builders in TBC. That is awesome. And we don't have that yet for uh, for Vintage Collection, so that's a pretty solid choice. After that is Luke Skywalker from The Mandalorian Season 2. That's one I'm really happy about as well. I do hope we get that in the Black Series eventually, but for TBC, that's great. And I uh, can't wait to see how that looks. Then last up, kind of same thing. is the Black uh, That is actually... The Dark Trooper. Dark Trooper is awesome, and I think it's going to go great in the TVC. Cannot wait to maybe see a comparison between TVC and Black Series, but yeah, that's that's pretty great. Anyway, guys, that is all the news we do have for today, so go down, hit the like button, and subscribe, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.